but my presentation tonight is on the importance of practice planning and engaging drills for juniors. And the way I'm going to attack this presentation is I'm going to talk about the practice plan and its importance throughout the presentation, but also by the time we start talking about engaging drills, whenever you watch a drill done by another coach, uh, is there a way that you can manipulate it and adjust it that can fit the context of your own athletes to make it more appropriate for them? You wouldn't take a Los Angeles Lakers Game 7 World Championship drill that they do uh, pre-scout and teach an under-12 Division C uh, team uh, to, to do the same thing. They're completely different athletes and completely different reasons for playing. All right, so if you, I have a rule with my presentations. If you have any questions, please interrupt me. Please interrupt me because if you don't uh, ask now, then when is gonna be the opportunity to ask after that? All right, so uh, my first point, the importance of having a practice plan and one of these is so vital and it can be done so many different ways. There are software programs on the internet there's one called Practice Plan Alive that coaches use uh, to write up their practice plans and make it organized. I know coaches that still use Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Doc to write up their session plans. Some of them even do it for the whole season, which is unreal. Then another way, a lot of coaches also do it by hand. And when we talk about practice planning, that doesn't always have to mean that you're sitting down writing and spending the time to write. But that also means that it's consuming your thinking time about what you're going to do. But this helps uh, organize your thoughts. And a great coach once taught me, uh, practice planning helps you prepare for the future, perform in the present, but also learn from the past. A great uh, book recommendation I can throw you at you right away is uh, Winning Takes Care of Itself by Bill Walsh. And one of the biggest lessons from that book is that if you create an environment of learning, then the rest falls into place. And that includes keeping all your session plans, writing down what you learned, then moving on to the next one. All right? So coaches, I can't stress enough how important it is no matter whether you coach an NBL one team or whether you coach an under eights beginners team, it's all the same thing. You have to understand the goal that you're trying to achieve. All right. Uh, it is also helpful for your assistant coaches and those that are around you trying to learn. So if there's a young enthusiastic coach that wants to pick your brain, just hand them one of these so that way they know the railroad path that you're taking and what you're trying to achieve. In relation to engaging drills and what I'm gonna show you tonight, my whole goal with all these drills is to try and maximize their ability of doing because when kids do, they're learning. Because if they're doing, and I can get them to maximize their thinking in the drill, then I can only assume that they're going to learn something. Then it's up to me, the chef, to really refine the dish to get it to look like on the court what I want it to look like. Um, the other way I'm gonna attack this presentation, I'm gonna show you common drills. And you might see in my plan that there are common drills I've written down that I see uh, commonly around New South Wales. And what I'm gonna get you to do, I'm actually gonna get you to think during my presentation and I'm gonna throw you some questions and I'm gonna pick your brains. And then I'm gonna adjust it to try and maximize the engagement and show you my thinking process about how I got there. Then if there are any questions, please feel free to poke my brain as well. But uh, for the very first most common warm-up drill that I see a lot of coaches do, and when I say common drill, don't think of it as this is bad because Jared said so. Just think of it as is there a better way to do it to get more uh, out of what I'm trying to achieve. So uh, boys and girl, can I please have all of you stand up without a basketball and standing on the baseline over here. Quick, five, four, three, two, whoa, whoa, freeze, freeze, freeze. So rule number one, the way you practice is the way you train. Uh, I asked them to be somewhere and the first three steps of theirs were all walking and then it, it, I needed to do a countdown to try and get them to hurry up. So rule number one, whenever I ask you to be somewhere, I expect you to sprint, sit back down. Let's do another demonstration. All right, 
So I'm going to provide that piece of instruction one more time. And notice I'm not being angry. I'm very cool, calm, and collected. I need everyone in under three seconds to stand on the baseline, spread out. Ready, set, go. All right, so just a simple adjustment of my expectations, and I didn't need to scream and kick them in the shin, but I just created some expectations of what I really wanted them to do. So what I want you to do, we're just gonna do a typical warm up, right? About how you might warm up pre-game or pre-training. So can you please just jog to halfway and back, go. Now, while you're watching them, I just want you to observe their faces. Now, this time, backpedal. Observe their faces, and then we're gonna do a comparison, and I want, I want to see whether you notice anything. Now, this time, skip. Now watch this. Now this time, everyone grab a partner, one behind the other, and then we're gonna have a race. Everyone goes once, halfway and back, both feet behind the baseline, ready, set, go. Race, it's a race. Go means sprint. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, first, second. Coaches, what did you notice? Uh-huh, right. So they're starting to smile. So in that previous warm-up, not much smiling going on. Like a lot of them trying to get into a zone. But at the end of the day, how old are you, seven? How old are you? Sorry? Twelve. Right, I, I haven't, yeah, I haven't coached children in a while. So just by adding a competitive component to that drill, I was able to get what I want to achieve in warm-up. And what, do I want, what I want to achieve in warm-up is just sweat and smiles. Because the sweat tells me their body's warm, the smiles show me that they want to be here. Because at the end of the day, whenever kids walk into training and leave, our biggest goal for juniors, kids that are playing for fun, they have to enjoy it and show me that they're smiling. All right, now, there's another big component that's missing here, right, is a basketball. So the person at the front of each line, can you please grab a basketball, quick, five. All right, so here's what you're gonna do. Exact same race, we go when I say go. All right, Joe? And then you're gonna go two dribbles, with either hand, cross over to the next, two dribbles, keep crossing over, ready? It's a race, whoa, whoa, hey, 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 Jeremy, you can get your own basketball and you can go twice. What was that, Buyundi? You didn't go? Thank you for listening. Ready, three, two, one, go. Good, two dribbles and crossover. All right, now it's just starting to get a little bit competitive, right? But now there's no decision-making element involved. So now we can get them to think. So this time, can I please have uh, Buyundi and Lewis, can you please stand out here? Everyone, if you have a basketball, uh, in fact, everyone get a basketball. You guys, can you spread out in this half court? Now we're still doing body movement fundamentals. So this time, Bayundi and Jeremy, you're gonna be the taggers. The boundary are the halfway line, sideline and baseline. Sorry, what did I say? Jeremy, Jeremy. sorry, Lewis. Bayundi and Lewis. These two are gonna be the taggers. We're gonna play a little game of TPs and Indians, right? So here's what's gonna happen. You two are gonna dribble around, but the movement you're gonna use is to skip. Everyone's gonna dribble and skip. If you get tagged, you turn into a teepee. Now, if you're dribbling around, you can free a teepee. Stand with your feet apart, please. You can free a teepee by bouncing the ball through their legs. And then you can keep going. But the whole time, you have to skip. skip. Ready. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Buyundi. Whose ball did I steal? Ready, set, go. Skip, skip, skip. If you get tagged, you turn into a teepee. Bounce through their legs. 
Good. Good. Keep dribbling while you're waiting. Keep dribbling while you're waiting. Good. And freeze. Freeze. So by adding a tagging game, what did you notice that their eyes were doing? Looking around, right? So they start to make decision making. Decision making decisions. All right. So uh, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to do a different movement. And what you're going to do, you're going to hop on one leg, but each foot twice. One, two, one, two, one. Well, it's kind of like skipping, but a bit funky. All right, let's make it three instead. So three hops on one foot, then switch. All right, exact same game, but now we're going to use three taggers. This time it's going to be Jeremy and... And where's Jack? Jack, all right? So Daniel, Jeremy, and Jack. Ready, set, go. Three on each leg. So this movement is something you might do on an agility ladder. Keep changing legs, keep changing legs, Ollie. Good, good. Three, two, one, and freeze. Freeze. Uh, tell me some more things you observe, coaches. They started to talk because when they were stuck in the mud or whatever else they needed to get their other teammates' attention, so there was a communication back there. Excellent, coach. So the th same thing we talk about every training is trying to encourage them to talk and I didn't need to tell them anything and they figured it out by themselves. Who was talking the loudest, do you think? Who talked a lot? Was it really? Well, let's just say, if you communicated fantastically, thank you for doing that, Joe. That's a sign of an unselfish teammate right there because he's helping out his teammates, trying to say and help them trying to achieve what they want to achieve. Thank you for doing that. Let me show you one more body movement fundamental that can help with reaction and decision making. Get into groups of three. Go, quick. Five, four, three, two. Now, in your group of three, group of two is fine. In your group of three, can you please stand on split line? All right, here's what you're gonna do. There's gonna be one tagger. I'm gonna use this group to demonstrate. One tagger. This is called rabbit and foxes. What's it called? Foxes. Ollie, you're gonna be the rabbit. Your goal, if I say rabbit, is to touch your closest sideline. You're gonna be the fox, Lewis. You're gonna stand on this side, but you're gonna face each other. And then if I say fox, you're gonna dribble and try and touch that sideline, all right? When I say go, all of you are gonna dribble. If I say rabbit, Ollie, you're sprinting this way, and then Dylan. Daniel. 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 D something. Daniel, you're going to dribble and try to tag him. So let's do a quick demo. So, no, you just get there. All right. If he gets you, that's a point for him. If you make it, that's a point for Wait, you. So he goes that way, and I follow him. You got to tag him. If I say fox, then you've got to get Lewis. All right. Quick demo. Ready? Dribble. Dribble. So this is just a demo. Fox. So you've got to tag him, correct. Or oh, now they're reacting to a stimulus. Ready? The group of two, it's just rabbit and fox, then the opposite person tags the opposite person. All right, ready. Choose one tagger, choose one rabbit, choose one fox. Dribbling on the spot. Listen for the instruction. Also a good listening game. Rabbit! You're the fox, Chloe. Rabbits go that way. Ready? Three, two, one, dribble, dribble! Fox! Well done, well done. You gotta try and evade him. What was your name, by the way? Dennis? Tex. Tex, Jared, mate. Ready? One more demo. Make sure you switch taggers, Biondi. Rabbits! Good, good, good. Sprint back and freeze. Freeze. Kids love tagging games. Kids love tagging games. That's why they love bull rush all the time because they get to chase after each other. Hopefully not tackle each other, right? But just another game like warm up, a basketball trying to evade a defender and reacting to a stimulus. Now, 
Uh, let me show you the next common drill that I see a lot of coaches use. Again, nothing wrong with it, but let's try and come up with ways to adjust it. Boys, can you set up, and girl, please set up egg beater for me. See, they know exactly, they know exactly what to go to. And that's not such a bad thing. If you name your drills, but hey, basketball still. Thank you. Tex. Thank you, boys. Uh, the benefit of naming your drills and revisiting them later on will allow them to do exactly that. Set it up, get started, minimal coach instruction. Now, while you watch egg beater coaches, I want you to please write down and think what skills is this particular drill working on. Ready? Egg beater, get set, go. Just go to 10 and freeze there. How many is that? I said get to 10 and freeze there. Let's go, one more. And freeze. Coaches, uh, what did you see? Passing, finishing, footwork, timing. And one more. <laughs> Big one, very important one, coach. Yep, communication is important. Also, moving after a pass. Uh, what is one of the biggest problems with it? Someone's standing around waiting. Yes, people are standing around waiting. If you've ever coached uh, under eights, what is the kid at the back of, uh, of the line always doing? Or admiring the infrastructure within the stadium, right? So, uh, how can I achieve the same things, but my maximizing, maximizing the space that I have and adjusting it? Now, this time, can you please get into a group of three, uh, two basketballs in your group? Uh, Chloe and your partner can make a group of four with someone. Quick, stand in your group. Five, four. Just, you can just make a group of four with anyone. Now, in your group, can you please get two basketballs? Now, the only... One of the other things that I didn't mention about egg beater, that pass from the baseline of someone in the hot spot facing that angle only really comes at one time during a whole basketball game. That's off a baseline inbound, all right, on the assumption that you're under your rim and under the assumption that your play ends up getting your kid in hot spot. So it doesn't happen very regularly. So the way that we're going to adjust this very simply, can I please have you three out here? All right. Daniel, you're going to stand here, face that way. Uh, Buyundi, please stand in the corner, throw him the basketball. Tex, please stand behind uh, Daniel. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to call it broken egg beater. All right, so Buyundi, you're going to pass to Daniel. Then you're going to sprint to the hot spot. Ready, go. You already know what to do. All right, you already know to, that's it. Shooter chases rebound, you replace that spot. All right, then you just fill in behind. All right, so now we're getting the same amount of reps up. You four can set up here. You four on that side of the ring. Ready? We're starting in three, two, one, get set, go. Now, I provided no technical instruction on purpose. I'm gonna get the drill set up immediately and get them going watch their natural reps, and then I can talk about the technical aspects after. And plus, there are a few contextual things going on. They're a representative team, so they can pass and catch. What happens if you have an under 12 uh, Division II team that can't pass and catch? You might have to bring it closer. Maybe start with bounce passes, but still the ability to improve their catching in the exact same drill, getting the same amount of reps. And freeze, freeze. All right, now a couple things, a couple things. Just technical aspects. Does anyone know, after this pass, what is this movement called in a basketball game? It is called a cut. What are you cutting through? The, you, well, you're cutting in par parallel to the base, but you're cutting through the... The defense, you cut through the defense. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. If you cut through the defense, what, what are you making your defenders do? React. React, 
and move. If you make your defense move, that might give a scoring opportunity to your teammates. So when you cut, I want you to sprint your cut. When you catch, I want you to come to like a little inside, outside foot stride stop. Can anyone demonstrate that? Can you demonstrate that, Biundi? Let me show you what I mean. If Daniel passes to me, ball in the air, feet in the air, as soon as the ball enters my hands, the foot that's closest to the rim, my inside foot, that heel is gonna hit the ground, but my stance is gonna be nice and low. So inside heel, toe, toe, then I'm gonna finish with my outside hand. Oh, that's a lot of pressure off. All right, if you're on this side of the court, what hand do you think I expect you to finish with? Because where is your defender gonna be standing? Yeah, on the inside. So we're gonna have the first group to make 10. Ready? First group to make 10 gets set. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys are super excited. Three, two, one, go. First group to make 10. Good, inside foot on the catch. Sprint, Jack. Jack, try and catch that. Try and catch it with the inside foot to the ground as soon as it enters your hand. Ready? Inside foot here. Bad luck. New ball. New ball. That's a boy. That's a boy. So you're a lefty, are you? Try the next one with your right hand. First team to 10 and freeze, freeze. High five for victories, three star jumps for not victories. You lost, so three star jumps. Now, just like, just like with normal leg beater, we can also take that shot to the elbow. We can take it to the block. We can take it to three point line, or you can even do uh, driving moves if you really wanted to. So that's just called broken egg bed. You can set up however you like, but another adjustment to a common drill to get more reps up. Now, uh, I understand the context is I have a full court. Now, if I had a half court, I might even put a third group in the middle, all right? Now, you might also be cautious that that means three people are running to the rim at the same time, but teaching them collision management and seeing before doing uh, is still so important because that will happen in a basketball game. Driving in uh, with five people underneath the rim is a common, common aspect to the game, all right? So that's just a broken egg beater. Uh, now the next most uh, common drill I wanna try and adjust for you, uh, three man weave into two on one. Three lines down here, quick, five, Four, thank you for sprinting. Hey, hey, that was, that was so much better. Thank you for being fantastic learners and sprinting on my instruction. Well done. High fives all round. Unreal, unreal. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Hey, that's the behavior I want, so that's a behavior I'm gonna reward. Uh, like, like Lono once taught me, uh, praise, publicly and criticize privately. The behavior that you want, be up in arms about it. The behavior that you don't want, you don't need to uh, publicly embarrass them, but just, I don't know, why am I explaining this? Oh, sorry, sorry, you just gotta take them to the side. So, three man weave, then torn one back. Let's see if you know, ready, set. Yeah, half court, ready, set, go. Splash. One more, one more. Oh, very creative, Lewis. Oh, nice. Oh, more pa- oh. Passing is important, but sometimes it's, uh, <laughs> it's more important to just put it in the rim. Now, uh, how can we get more reps out of this drill? Again, you probably know what my answer is gonna be about the biggest problem. Three people going, and then the other seven people, assuming you have a team of 10, seven people just waiting on the side. Not much learning going on. Now, how would I adjust this? Uh, let me show you what, uh, what uh, an example of what I would do. And again, you can make it up however you want. Uh, we're gonna play 
sideline piggy in the middle into two on one. All right, this is gonna, watch this. Uh, you four, can you please stand on this sideline? You're going to be group one. Group one, what group are you? One. Magical, grab one basketball. Uh, you three, stand at halfway. You four, stand on that sideline. Grab one basketball. Now, be cautious. You're in the most dangerous part of the court because you have the coaches around you. So your passing is going to have to be pristine. All right? Uh, now, you guys, can you please spread out along that sideline? It's going to be white versus black. Uh, Joe, you can be the first piggy. And then Chloe and Daniel, you're going to be the first piggies. Now, here's what you're going to do. So, Lewis and Jeremy, you're going to be on the same team. And you're going to play pig in the middle 2v2. Um, it's electric piggy. So, whenever you touch it, Whenever you touch, it's automatic switch over. All right? So, Joe, you're just going to be in the middle. And then Tex and uh, Tom. Dom. Dom? Tom. 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 Spread out. Pass Tex the basketball. You two, white versus black. Black starts with the ball. Now, group one, group two, group three. Here are the rules. When I say go, everyone's going to play piggy in the middle on your sideline. While you're playing, I might say group one. If I say group one, the two people that were on offense versus one of the piggies, it doesn't matter who, you're gonna play torn one towards the rim. Okay, let's do a quick demo. Ready, pass, piggy in the middle. Get open, Jeremy, get open, Jeremy. Good, good, and then group one, go. So it's torn one, so Daniel, you'd be out, and they're playing torn one from there. Now, while that's going on, you're playing. While that's going on, you're playing. Now, you just go this way, all right? And then I might say group two, then it's whoever's the piggy is on defense. And then the two on the outside are on offense. Ready, set, go. Getting open, getting open. So now, now they're, that's fine. I should have caught that. Um, now they're executing one of the skills that is relevant in turn one. They're passing around a defense. Group three, group three. Daniel, you're group one, mate. And then that way, we're randomizing where the torn one is coming from. Group two. And group one. Good, keep playing once you're back there. Keep playing and then switch roles. Doesn't matter who. And group three. Ready, keep going, keep going. One. Nice finish, Chloe. Oh, I, you're group three. I said one. Oh, you're still on sideline? Oh, my mistake, Ollie. Oh, my mistake. Group two. Good, attack, attack the rim. And freeze, freeze, freeze. Uh, go back to your spot, please, group two. So again, coaches, just another adjustment, but then just to talk about uh, the, technical, the technical aspects of this torn one. Uh, you guys, please demonstrate your torn one for me. And freeze, freeze. All right, uh, Joe, you get to hot spot. Tex, you try and defend both. Now, uh, I don't have to unpack this too far, right? But uh, boys and Chloe, tell me, what's the most simple decision right now? To drive and attack. Yeah, that's called a driving lane. Now go guard, uh, go guard Lewis. Tom, what is the most obvious decision now? Players, pass, right? Because that's a wide open passing lane. Now, what happens if you get closer and then defender plays it really safely and they just keep sinking towards the ring? What might you do? Why? Because he's sinking and he is with a teammate in a what position? Rebounding position, right? So he can come down the floor and if Tex wants to play it safe and he sinks, 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 you could shoot it, well, miss it, he could get it and Joe could finish, right? Are you feeling like you're in shack mode, Joe? That big smile tells me everything. All right, come back here. Now, last thing, ball handler, Whoever the ball handler is, I want you to be aggressive. I don't want you to just walk it up 
all right? Really get it and attack the rim and put the defender under some heat, all right? Everyone, piggy in the middle. I hope you switched offense and defense, by the way. Have you guys been switching offense and defense? Last demonstration. Ready, sit, go. Ready, two, two. Good, be aggressive. Good, get back to your spot quick. And three. Go group three, go Biondi. Nice, nice. And one. Yo. People, does one person stay out? Correct. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You've been, you've been, you've been doing it right the whole time. Five, four, three, two, and freeze. Freeze. High five each other. Job well done, boys. And Chloe. All right. Uh, you four, please make one straight line here. Uh, you three, make one straight line here at the middle of the free throw line. You three, one straight line from the block facing the rim. Uh, do you know how to play 21? Uh, can you please explain the rules to me? Be brave, be courageous, come on. Correct. Seven per line? I'll explain it. You're shooting it, two shots maximum. If you miss your shot, you can chase your rebound. If you get the rebound, you get a second shot. If you make the first one, two. If you make the second, one. But if it hits the ground, you don't get to shoot again. All right? So demonstrate, Lou shoots. If he makes it or misses it, then he gets the second shot, then he passes it on, right? And then Daniel shoots. Now, on every catch, no dribbles. Just catch it and shoot it, okay? Then it's the first team to 21. Let's just show the coaches a quick demo. Ready, set, go. If you're next in line, get down in stance. Next in line, get down in stance. Drop your hips, Lou. Drop your hips, Tex. Be prepared for your shot. Wrist snap back. Good, Jack, down in stance. Good, count your score. If you get your made shot rebound, you get to make it again. You can, yeah, you can get a three point play. And freeze. Freeze. Coaches, uh, can you please tell me uh, what is this drill working on with these athletes? Yeah, avoiding collision because it's such a cramped space. Yes, yeah, sticking the rebound after your shot. Anything else? No, oh, shooting touch. Yeah, most importantly. Now, there, there is a bit of a... Um, a, a controversial mindset here, right? Because what this drill is also teaching the kids, well, I, I wouldn't say that conclusively, but if they're shooting it and we're saying, go chase your rebound, then they're really basically going in with a mindset that they're gonna miss it. That's not the kind of mindset we wanna teach shooters. We want them to be incredibly confident and thinking that every time they're gonna shoot it, they're gonna splash it, all right? So what's gonna happen this time Instead of setting it up this way, can you please get a basketball, Chloe? Can you two please stand on the elbow? You four are still on the same team, all right? But the same rules apply. Daniel, you're gonna shoot it. But Jeremy, you're gonna rebound it. I want you to shoot it with maximum confidence, okay? So when he shoots it, you're the one who's gonna get the and one. Rebound it, boom then you just switch lines. Ready, set, go. Good, get after it, get after it, good. Fine, so that's three points, okay? You three, please go down there. Uh, two of you, uh, Ollie, Ollie, with Bayundi, just here. One team, one team. Let's just go to, whoa, 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 hold your horses, hold your horses. Freeze, freeze. We're just going to go to a score of, uh, let's go to 11. First team to 11. Ready, set, go. And not to mention, a common problem that you'll probably see in a basketball game is a lot of ball watching on shots. So it just gets the teammate getting ready to react and really trying to put him in that habit of doing something on the shot. Already, we just started. And freeze, freeze, switch sides, 
switch sides. Let's go to a different spot. Let's go uh, short corner and uh, short corner and block. Short corner and block. Short corner and block. Rebounders on the block. Rebounders on the block. Ready. First team to 11. Ready, set, go. Get after the rebound. Catch and shoot, catch and shoot. Going to 11. Good, Biondi. Don't let the ball hit the ground. Don't let the ball hit the ground. Now, you can mix up the spots as well, coaches, completely up to you. But just another demonstration of trying to put the shooter in shooter's mentality. Thank you. They obviously have the Steph Currys over there. High five victory team. And then losing teams, two push-ups. Two push-ups. Get those triceps working. So just another, just another adjustment to a, another common drill to really get more out of uh, what you're trying to really get done. All right? Um, now, what I also wanted to show you, because I'm also conscious of time. Oh, let me show you this one, actually. I can do this in 10 minutes. Uh, boys and Chloe, please set up and do layup lines. Ready? Three, two, one. And go from halfway, actually, please, Jack. Get set, go. Layup lines, layup lines. All right, so another common drill, another common drill that people do around the world. And there are helpful moments for this drill, especially pre-game and especially trying to take the athletes through visualization and the ability to focus on the battle ahead. But at training, is it really one of the most efficient ways that we can practice um, finishing under contact? Let me show you a, a, a great drill that I picked up from another coach that I use anywhere I go with juniors. And freeze, freeze. Now, uh, boys and Chloe, boys and Chloe, can you please grab a partner and one ball between two? Quick, five, four. All right, now. Give me one pair in the corner over here. One pair. Another pair on the wing, and the wing is in line with the free throw line. Another pair on the other wing, another pair in the other corner, and another pair up top. Yeah, one ball between two, please. So this drill is just called Hawks finishing. Now, in Hawks finishing, there's multiple ways you can do this, but the way that we're gonna set this one up right now People with the basketballs, you're on offense and you're gonna be the ones finishing. So you're gonna be facing the rim and you're just gonna be doing, just dribbling on the spot, all right? But Yundi's gonna start. Tex, can you please stand in a very sloppy defensive stance in front of Bayundi? Because here's your job. Uh, when I say go, Bayundi's gonna dribble past you for a one foot finish. Now, you're gonna play dodgy defense, all right? Which I'm sure you don't do very regularly. Now, as he gets past you, I want you to just double forearm and push him and just create some contact without like shoving him on his finish to get him better at finishing. Once he shoots, get your rebound, switch jobs, get back to your spot. After his shot, you go. 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 Shot, you go. Then once uh, Lou has his shot, then Tex, that will be your turn. All right, let's walk through a demo so you know what, we, what we're doing. But everyone, while you're waiting, you're dribbling. Ready? Dribble, dribble, and go, Biondi. And freeze, freeze. So just to clarify, everyone who's dribbling, you've got to look at the person that's doing the layup next to you. Because as soon as they shoot it, that's when you go. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. So that way it's just self-sufficient, mate. Ready? Go, Tommy. Everyone dribbling. Everyone dribbling. Good. 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 Get out of the way. After your layup, get out of the way. <laughs> now, just a way, just a way to get some contact on a layup 
and from here you can mi even mix up your layups. And freeze, freeze. Now, after both of you have a go from that spot, you just move to the next spot, all right? So Beyonder, you would be here, Tommy, you would go there, so on and so forth. Now, the next layup you're going to do, you're going to do two foot finishes, two foot finishes. Ready, Lou, you're gonna start. Everyone dribbling, dribble however you want. And go, Lewis. Two foot finishes. Make sure you get out of the drill. Don't come up through the middle. Two foot finishes. Daniel. Nice, Jack. And freeze. Freeze. Now, Jeremy, you're going to go next for the next demo. But with your two foot finishes, shoot with your outside hand and go in the direction that you're uncomfortable going in. Jeremy, what hand are you? So I really want you to try and go left and finish with your left. All right? Jack, same with you. You're left-handed, right? So I really want you to, to challenge you to go right and finish with your right. Ready? Jeremy's first. Go. Two foot finishes. Yes. Good. Try and finish with your weak hand. Now we can even make this more competitive coaches by putting a score on it or telling the defense to really stop the offense. Yes. And Daniel Freeze. Freeze. Now this time, defense, you're allowed to block the offense. All right, now, oh, oh. Now, uh, make sure as you play defense, no fouls. If I see a foul, I'll call it, and that's one push up behind the baseline. Ready, set, go. Oh. Good, good. Nice, nice. That's a good thing for him. Ready, Joe, you got defense again. When you're ready, Jeremy. Good. When you're ready, Lou. Oh, nice move. Oh, foul, foul. Foul, yep, yep. We've got, uh, we've got comments referees, mate. Comments referees. Oh, just one push up. One push up behind the baseline. I'm only joking, only joking, only joking. And freeze, freeze. Uh, give your partner a high five. Well done, boys and Chloe. Well done. Now, uh, last thing, last thing I want to show you, and this will, this will transition seamlessly into Lono's presentation, because what Coach Lono is going to do is small-sided games. But I want to show you uh, the kind of thinking process behind setting up a small-sided game. And, and I, I hope you got the gist, but whenever I look at these drills and I try to figure out what it's working on, then I just kind of work backwards from there. And then I think, all right, what's the skill? How many people do I have? What space do I have? How much equipment do I have? And then I just kind of make up a game from there. So one of the most common questions that I get as a coach development manager are rebounding games. So let me show you a small-sided game and how I think about it uh, to create. And I'm seriously just making this up. I'm seriously just making this up. All right, so we have, uh, how many do we have? We, what's that, 13? Two, four, six, eight. 10, 11. 11 is fine. Uh, give me a group of six over here, and I'm going to pretend I'm in the half court. Then the other five, the other five, can you please stand over here at the halfway? Uh, you two. Oh, yes, that is, sorry. Yes, at halfway. All right, so I'm maximizing space. I've got 11 athletes, I've got a rim, and I've got space at halfway. You guys, you're going to play, I'm making this up again, uh, there's six of them, so we can go three on three. It's a small enough sided game. Uh, and then the skill is rebounding, so I'm going to give points to rebounds. All right, so uh, I need two other boys to go light. Can you flip over your jersey? You're going to be on Bayundi's Bandits. 
all right, then it's going to be dark versus light. Now, in this game, in this game, you get points for rebounding. It's three on three, three on three. So here's what you're going to do. You get points for a rebound. So if Tex has the ball and someone shoots it and you make or miss, if you get the rebound, uh, Lachlan, Lockie, get this. Oh, sorry, Lockie. If you get this, if that's an offensive rebound, two points. If you get a defensive rebound, that's only one point. Remember, you're getting a rebound on make or miss. Now, after, you want to ask a question? Uh, what happens if you score? Do you get a point? Great question. If you score, no points. But if your team gets the ball back, you're going to take the ball outside the three-point line before you're allowed to shoot again. Correct. Yeah, if the opposing team from the shooting team gets the ball, well, after every shot, you've got to take it outside of three. Show quick demo. Ready, set, go. No, no, I'm going to show you what you're going to do in a sec. Ready, set, go. Good, we're playing three on three. Points for rebounds. So you've got to try and get a shot up somewhere and then someone's got to try and chase a rebound. So he's trying to get a shot up. Keep going. Rebound it. Rebound it. Keep going. Keep going. And freeze. Freeze, how many points is that? That's a defensive rebound. That's one. Ready? You've got to keep your eye on that, coaches. A little, uh, little bit of tampering in the scoring system. Five, four, three, two, freeze. Out of bounds. Turnovers are per normal. Now, freeze. Now, this group here. Um, now, I'm still thinking about rebounding, and I understand it's a challenge. Uh, without a rim. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to work on the skill of the actual rebound. Uh, so when we rebound, we want to catch it above our head at the peak of our jump. So we're going to play, if you've played footy before, we're going to play like four things back. So here's the, here's the game. Uh, Chloe, put your ball to the side, please. Uh, Jack and Tom, stand over there. Uh, then Joe, Jeremy and Chloe, go stand over there. Do you guys know how to play four things back? Uh, well, let's make this up as we go. Uh, Jack, you're going to bounce the ball as high as you can. As high as you can. All right? Then you've got to catch it before it hits the ground a second time. If you drop it, if you drop it, then they get the point. But if they catch it, then nothing. So your whole goal is to bounce it as high as you can so they drop it. Ready? Quick demo. Ready, set, go. Don't let it... Right, keep going, keep going. Good, Tom, you've got to get in the action. Good, keep going. And freeze. So new rule. We ran into the first problem. So, so here's the rule. You're going to keep alternating catches. So the quicker you go, the more advantage you might get. Ready, set, go. 3x3, go. <laughs> no, you're playing three on three, Ollie. D board, keep going. So both these games are, I'm hoping, working on the skill of rebounding because at least these kids are focused on actually getting after the ball and then these kids are focused on the... <laughs> but you've got to at least bounce it towards them, Jack. Jack, they've got to drop it. They've got to drop it, mate. Ready? Go, Jeremy. There's no drop. Why are you throwing it in the middle of the court for? And freeze. Now the bounce is obviously too easy. Throw it up in the full with spin on it. Now catch that. Ooh, go. Get him, get him. No drop. Oh, drop point. Well, that's not a shot. That's an underarm finger roll. That's not even anything. Keep going. Get after it, D board. And freeze, freeze. Now, now, what you might freeze. Now, what you might notice now is just organised chaos. That's good. That's good. Right, because that's where the learning happens. Now, you can also start to see that people are starting to bend the rules. 
like over here and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not criticizing Jack, but he figured out a rule. It's like, well, my goal is to get the ball to bounce a second time, so I'm going to throw it all the way over there and make sure they have no chance of catching it. So I had to adjust rule to basically say, no, you only get points for drops. And then this group, I saw Tex just throw a random shot underhanded off the backboard in the hope that someone would rebound it, all right? So making sure that they're still on task, uh, still on task, to, to try and shoot it to create a rebounding opportunity.